You must be proud of yourself, mister. You've turned your son into a killer. And he's going to enjoy the same kind of life you have, if he lives long enough. Have Gun, Will Travel. Starring Mr. John Daner as Paladin. San Francisco, 1875. The Carlton Hotel. Headquarters of a man called Paladin. Mr. Paladin, here is a brand new order. Thank you, A-boy. Just set it down. I... Mr. Paladin, why Stewart say this brandy very special, also very expensive? Oh. Mm. Very palatable. Yes, yeah, so, uh, sake cheaper and faster, but sometimes cause you much trouble. <laughs> you know, hey boy, here in the West, it's water that causes the real trouble. <laughs> oh, no, Mr. Paladin, water. Who ever got into trouble because they drink too much water? Now, listen, this item in today's paper... Benedict, Wyoming, the refusal of a local rancher to permit access to the sole remaining source of water in this drought-stricken area has resulted in the deaths of two men and threatened open warfare. Oh, too bad. Hey, Mr. Paladin, you plan to offer services in interest of drought-stricken area? As a matter of fact, I have a letter to Mr. Wellman of Benedict, Wyoming. Here, ready to mail. Will you take care of it? Oh, yes. Uh, anything else, Mr. Paladin? Yes. You might bring me another brandy. Winston tastes good like a cigarette should because... There's filter blend up front. Up front ahead of the filter. And the flavor you get in a Winston cigarette comes from filter blend. Filter blend means fine tobacco. Filter blend up front. And the you get in a Winston cigarette comes from Filter Blend. Filter Blend is a mighty good reason for you to smoke Winston. Because it means tobacco specially processed for filter smoking. A Winston secret. You get Winston's own pure white modern filter, plus the rich, delightful flavor of fine tobacco. There's Filter Blend up front, up front ahead of the filter. And the fun you get in a Winston cigarette comes from filter blend and makes Winston taste good like a cigarette should. Winston tastes good like a cigarette should. It was mid morning when I rode into Benedict. The town was hot, dusty, and quiet. There was a feeling of tension in the air, an uneasiness, a waiting for something to happen. I tied my horse to the hitching rail and went into the saloon. What'll it be, mister? Yeah, uh, glass of rye. You might as well fill mine again, Barney. Okay, Jeff. It's hot. Yeah. Pretty quiet town. No more than most. You live around here? Yep. How do I get to the Wellman Ranch? Take the north road, about three miles. Oh, thanks. Yeah, it'll be a dollar. Right. You a friend of the Wellmans? No. Looking for work, then? In a way... What's going on here? What's what's everyone waiting for? For me to get killed. Jeff, Casey just rode into town. Guess the waiting's about done. That squares us, Barney. Maybe I'll see you, mister. He was slender, rangy, maybe 19. Too young for the troubled seriousness in his eyes as he walked out of the saloon. When I got outside, he was already standing in the thick, white dust of the street, steady, 
watching the man advancing toward him. Don't, Casey. There's no sense to this. You want an apology? All right, I apologize. It's no good, Casey. Listen to me, please. You know you... Excuse me, mister. Have to get my horse. You killed that man. I know. Guess the town will have to keep on waiting. There's a job open at the Wellman's now. His. The drought had taken its toll at the Wellman Ranch. The house stood still and desolate in an expanse of bare, scorched earth. I rode into the yard and dismounted. Then I led my horse to the watering trough. It was empty. I tried the hand pump. I'm sorry, it's dry. Huh? Oh. How do you do, ma'am? Uh, I can let you have a bucket from the kitchen pump if you like. Yeah, I'd appreciate it. It's been a long ride. Just come on in and help yourself. Fine. My name is Paladin. I'm here to see Mr. Wellman. Well, he, sh he should be back soon. Uh, uh, the pump's by the sink. It'll need priming. Thank you. Mister, yeah? uh, you you just come from town? Yes. Did did anything happen? Uh, man was killed, if that's uh, what you mean. You you know who? His name is Casey, I believe. I understand he worked for you. Oh no. I was afraid when I saw him start away this morning. Jeff did it. Jeff? Yes. So senseless, over nothing. And there'll be more. Well, this Jeff didn't want to kill him. He tried to stop him. Oh, boy. Poor Jeff. No, no. Jeff's alive. Martha, Casey's dead. Young Calvert Gun. Who are you? He's, he's Mr. Paladin. He just told me about it. Oh. I passed through Benedict on my way out here. I saw it happen. You're a Paladin, huh? Think you can stand up to Calvert? If there's a good reason. That's your job. Get rid of him. Well, I don't think we understand each other. I offered my services to help you get water. Here. This is your card, isn't it? The one you sent me? Yes. Have gun, will travel. That only means one thing as far as I'm concerned, and it's the only reason I hired you. Then we've both made a mistake, Mr. Wellman. I'm not an executioner. Constipation can be a problem for anyone, even doctors. And when constipation occurs, it's interesting to see just what doctors consider important about a laxative they might use or recommend. Well, a majority of the doctors we heard from had this to say. A laxative should be effective, gentle, as close to natural acting as possible, and a medicine that can be used with complete confidence. Now, Exlax has been popular with many doctors and millions of people over the years because chocolate at Exlax is effective. Overnight, it helps you toward your normal regularity. Exlax is gentle. Next morning, it gives you the closest thing to natural action. And that's why many doctors and millions of people use Exlax with complete confidence. Exlax, the laxative that helps you toward your normal regularity gently. Overnight. Is Exlax in your medicine cabinet? The heat rose off the dry, parched earth to hang in the air and sear every breath. I was well on my way back to town when I heard someone coming up behind me fast. Paladin! Uh, ooh, ooh, ooh. Paladin, wait! Paladin, I'm sorry. I, I was upset about Casey. I, I wasn't thinking straight, but I need your help. We all do. I told you, Wellman, I didn't offer that kind of help. Look, can I talk to you or not? Go ahead. We're desperate, Paladin. Our water holes are dried up. Even our deep wells are going dry. Another week of this and our herds will be buzzard bait. Calvert's trying to ruin us. Now, why should a boy like that want to ruin you? A boy? I'm not talking about Jeff. It's his father, Roy Calvert. 
He owns the six iron over in the valley. Roy Calvert? Yeah. There was a gunfighter by that name. The same man. Bought the ranch here three years ago. Well, what's he done? What's he got to do with your water supply? Now, there's a leak behind his ranch fed by underground springs. It never runs dry. Calvert's land crosses the mouth of the valley. It's the only approach to the lake. Now he's fenced it off, won't let our herds through. Well, there must be some local ordinance about that, an easement, a right of way. Yeah, there's nothing in writing. Folks just always used the lake whenever there's been a dry spell. Calvert let us through the first year he'd come, but not now. Why not? I don't know. Two weeks ago, Harry Craig got mad, tried to drive his herd through. Young Calvert killed two of his men. Well, his father's turned him into a worse killer than he was himself. I'll tell you right now, Paladin, the only way to break Calvert is to get that boy. What do you really want, Mr. Wellman? Water or Jeff's hide? I want results, fast. All right. I'll get them for you, but in my own way. What are you going to do? Talk with Calvert. At the gateway of the Six Iron Ranch, I wondered if I was heading into trouble. I could hear gunshots. I dismounted and moved toward the sound. When I reached the corner of the barn, I realized what was happening. There was a crudely drawn silhouette of a man on the barn wall. And Roy Calvert was working with his son. That's good, but you're a little late and the second shot hit too high. But I hit him. He'd have been hurt. That's not good enough. How many times do I have to tell you when you fire, every shot's got to kill. Hurt ain't enough. From the armpits to the waist, that's your target. Nowhere else. It's good advice if all you want to do is kill him. Who are you? What do you want? Five minutes of conversation. The name's Paladin. Paladin. Yeah, I've heard of you. Did you get that job at the Wellmans? Anybody who works for Wellman has no business here. Anybody who would deprive his neighbors of water has no business being a rancher. So that's it. Can we talk it over? Let me show you something. Then you decide how much there is to talk over. I followed Calvert through the yard on past the ranch house to a pleasant tree-shaded knoll that overlooked the valley below. He stopped beside a mound of earth marked with a white cross. Here's all I got to say, Paladin. That's my wife's grave. This town put her there. Twenty years we were married. Kind woman she was. Good, patient. And lonely. So lonely. You must have loved her very much. It takes that for a man like you to give up his gun. I turned to this ranch because I wanted her to have a place where she could say hello to somebody and he wouldn't look past her. Or somebody talked to her. Pass the time of day like ordinary folks. The name Calvert was a death sentence to more than 20 men. Did you think he could hide it? Nobody'd have known except for Wellman. He found out and passed the word around. And she was alone again. Yeah. Gunslinger's wife. Killer's wife. When she took sick, nobody came to call except the doctor. Then she died. I loved her very much. This town killed her. Now I'm going to kill this town. Calvert, the ranchers will drive their way through. They tried it once. It cost them. Maybe next time it'll cost you. Not likely. With Jeff playing my hand. I have more respect for a man who plays his own. Calvert had been hurt. Badly. But now the ranchers in the town were being hurt. Somewhere it had to end. I went back to see Wellman at his place. I found him by the corral, his horse saddled and ready. Well, Calvert gonna let us through? Wellman, I can't undo three years of hate in one afternoon. Calvert told me about his wife. Wife? What? Well, what do you mean? We never had anything to do with her. I, I know. That's just it. And I know if we can't use that lake, we're wiped out. Now, can we get through or not? As of right now, no. And then we'll have to drive our way through, and you take care of the boy. I told you before, I'll do this job my way. Now, if you're working for me, Paladin, I'm going out for a meeting with the other ranchers. If you're with us, get rid of young Calvert. If not, cut out. Uh. Mr. Paladin? 
in. Mr. Paladin, wait. You, you're leaving? I can't do this his way. Oh, then he'll go ahead without you, him and the others. Yeah, looks that way. They'll, they'll be fighting and shooting. Men will be killed. Men with wives and family. Mr. Paladin, please. Now, wait a minute, Mrs. Wellman. Are you asking me to kill Jeff? I'm asking you to measure one life against many. Car owners, I have news of a product so new, it's amazing it's here today at all. It's new k Smooth Seal. You say it's new? You say it's new? So it's new. What does it do? Well, it's a fluid you add to your automatic transmission. Automatic transmission. It stops the leaks in your transmission and makes it smooth and quiet. Makes it smooth? Makes it quiet? How can I tell if I should try it? That's easy. Your stop C and you start to go, and you give it the gas pretty good. If you hear a sort of whirring or grinding noise, if you feel a jerk or jolt or jar, then your transmission just isn't up to par. Grinding noises? Jars and jerks. That's how my transmission works. Boys, if that's the case, then you've got a case for new k Smooth Seal. New k Smooth, smooth seal? seal? How will that help? Well, it's made to soften those shrunken seals and smooth out the shifting when there's power on the wheels. If you heard a whirring or felt a jar when you pull away in your modern car, you are a man who needs a can. Just $1.95, and it works while you drive. Anyone here for K-Side Smooth Seal? Hit me. I'm in. If it doesn't do the job, you get double your money back. <laughs> What are you doing back here again, Paladin? If you're working for Willman, sooner or later we'll shoot it out. You've killed three men already, Jeff. Do you have a taste for it now? You think I want to stand out there watching someone come at me like Casey this morning and know I had to kill him? Did you have to? He'd have killed me. That's your excuse this time. What'll it be next? He asked for it over nothing. Jeff, when you set yourself up as the fastest gun, there'll be men making you prove it until the day you can't. Paladin, haven't we had enough talk? This time you listen, Calvert. Wellman's getting the other ranchers together. They're going to drive their way through to the lake. They're going to try, you mean? The herds are going through tomorrow afternoon. I don't think so. I'll see to it myself. I wouldn't if I were you. If you have any objections, I'll be in town all morning. We can settle everything right there. We'll be glad to oblige. You were Jeff. Me. Oh, it's getting easier all the time, isn't it, Jeff? You must be proud of yourself, Calvert. You've turned your son into a killer, and he's going to enjoy the same kind of life you have, if he lives long enough. Back in town, word had got around that Jeff Calvert was riding in to meet me. I waited in the saloon while men spoke in whispers marked time. Wellman was there, too. Well, you might as well fill mine up again, Barney. Uh, I want to tell you, Paladin, I'm sorry about the way I talked yesterday. Wellman, it's late to clear a guilty conscience. If you'd use that word sorry when Calvert's wife died, this wouldn't be necessary. Uh, I know that. I did some thinking last night. Mr. Paladin, the Calvert's just rode in town. All right. That squares us, Barney. Well, I hope the show is worth the price. Hello, Paladin. All right, Jeff. Anytime you're ready. It won't be self-defense this time, Jeff. You'll have to draw first. No. No, Paladin, over here. What? Me. You're, you're pretty good, Paladin. Decided to play your own hand after all, huh, Calvert? Dad, are you all right? Sure. You were wrong, Paladin. I didn't turn my boy into a killer. Let's get him to the doctor, Jeff. Unless we're not finished. We're finished. I got nothing to prove. Good night. 
I'd like to help. After he sees the doctor, I, I could drive him on home. Calvert, well, maybe we can talk, huh? A little late for that, Wellman. Calvert, when you came here, you expected people to forget the past. Well, suppose you try it. Let it end. You're right. Wellman, I'd, I'd be much obliged to talk. Hello, hey boy. Oh, Miss Paladin. Oh, too bad. What? What's too bad? You come back, you find San Francisco cold, rainy, fog creeping around everywhere. Oh, miserable. Oh, what are you talking about, hey boy? This is what I've dreamed of for many a long, hot, dusty mile. Oh, oh, then very good. Say, you look at time, Mr. Paladin. Something I can do for you? There sure is, hey boy. Nice, big pitcher of ice water. <laughs> Rotate the tires? But I thought they rotated right along with the wheels when the car is going. Uh, well, ma'am, that's not the kind of rotation we mean. Y you see, your tires should be switched around for more even wear and longer life. My goodness, taking care of a car is so complicated, I wouldn't know where to start. <laughs> well, seeing you have a General Motors car, you made the right start by bringing it here to your GM dealers for service, especially at vacation time when we're offering performance service specials. Now, in addition to rotating the tires, we'll check the wheels, tune up the engine, adjust the front end, and give your car a thorough lubrication. That way, you're sure of top performance all summer. It's all a part of our guardian maintenance service. What's guardian maintenance? Well, that means train mechanics will use special tools and factory-approved parts to do the best job. GM dealer guardian maintenance. The best kind of service for the best kind of cars. Chevys, Pontiacs, Olds, Buicks, or Cadillacs. Have Gun, Will Travel. Created by Herb Meadow and Sam Rolfe, is produced and directed in Hollywood by Norman MacDonald and stars John Daner as Paladin with Ben Wright as Hayboy. Tonight's story was written by Albert Alley and adapted for radio by Ann Dowd. Featured in the cast were Sam Edwards, Virginia Christine, Vic Perrin, Harry Cook, and Harry Bartell. Hugh Douglas speaking. Join us again next week when CBS Radio presents Have Gun, Will Travel. <laughs>